Hey, welcome to the episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. Henry and Kevin are joining me for a back-to-back -back episode. Mm -hmm. In and, for more. Yep. And we're doing what some say is a clone of Westfalterian 12. This is St. Bernardus Abbot 12. And I actually have uh, the L Street News right here. There's an article about the real story of St. Bernardus and Westfalterian and Kevin, you just read this, right? What, what yeah. was the gist of it? I think the gist is um, West Voltarian had their facilities. That, the facilities were not good. And right. um, they kind of contracted St. Bernardus out to brew the beer. You know, a contract brew, which we see a lot of in America. Um, they did that for about 30, 40 years. In 1992, West Voltarian decided that Trappist beer should be made in the Trappist monastery walls. So they took it back. When they took the, the brewing of the West Lutheran beers back, St. Bernard started their own brewery, and they have grown in kind of leaps and bounds. Um, now, the St. Bernard is using the West Lutheran yeast. Right. The West Lutheran is using the West Mali yeast to make their beers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's kind of where that this being a clone comes from. The people who make this made the West Lutheran 12 for 40 years, right. and now so they're, they're, making, the recipe. they're making a beer of at least similar quality. Right. All right, so what do we have for appearance? It's similar to the other one, just clearly way more head than the West Lutheran. Uh, it's a mahogany color, I guess you could say. Sure, it would. It's fair. Yeah. How's the aroma? Yeah, this is far less complex. It's less dynamic. I mean, it's a little bit colder though, so yeah, that could be it. Yeah, this is but colder. The primary aroma I'm getting here is, is sort of a malt and alcohol. What are you getting, Kevin? I don't know. I think it might be a little cold. Yeah. I think the nose is is subtle again. I'm kind of surprised. Both have been subtle. This is a little less complex. You know, Henry talked in that last beer video about everything blending together extremely well. It was beautiful. This doesn't blend as well. I don't really get all that much booze. It, it's I, a woody, it's more smoky boozy. kind of thing. I think there's a lot of the same characteristics. Um, this, some of those characteristics stick out more and it's not as blended. Um, but mm. still very subdued. Very, very subdued. Mm -hmm. When you're talking 10% beer... I think a lot of American craft beer fans expect big hops, huge malt, big sweetness, oak. It's not that way at all. Um, but a lot more mild. But it's it does uh, do a good job of masking the alcohol. I'm not yeah, the alcohol is again very similar. What I like about this beer is that liveliness. Yeah. that I talked about missing in the other one. Mm. Carbonation is a little higher. Now this, I, I think Much we're higher. drinking a little fresher, so it's not really fair to compare, but a little bit higher, a little bit more bold, a little bit more robust, a little bit more energy. Um, same flavors, very similar flavors. The dark fruit is a little bit sweeter, a little bigger. The malt's a little bigger. I think the alcohol taste on the back end is a little lower. Um, again, doesn't just like the nose doesn't blend as well, but it's got that energy to it, a little bit more of a freshness, live carbonation, bigger fruits. I like it. Mm. Sparkles across the roof of the mouth with its carbonation. The flavor is a little bit lighter. Um, definitely though, more more alcohol character, less less harmony between the flavors and a, a tighter, less diverse band of flavors. Now is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm going to rate it as a bad thing. Okay. Uh, comparatively speaking, uh, the last one, it was just such a, a more diverse landscape of, yeah. you know, pleasures to be had, uh, essentially. And this is much less so. I mean, there's a, a lot of good flavor. It's very, it's malty. There's this candy kind of, well, not candy, but like a, like a hard candy kind of sweetness, mm. similar to the the, the West Lutheran Twelve of, like a caramel almost, um, something that you get in kind of like a barley wine. It's like that, butterscotch almost. Definitely dark fruit. I don't really get. I get wood in the nose, but I don't really get any oak kind of flavor. Less wood, less leather. 
and it, it is a bit spicier. Yeah, definitely. More peppery. Yeah, you know, like definitely say. more peppery. Yeah. But it's it's you know I've had Belgian beers that are way more peppery and had more energy than this. Mm. And this one, so this one's not really a sipper. It's like it's it, the drinkability on it is much higher than I expected. It's and it's it, considering it's ten percent ABV is is really remarkable. Yeah, there, there's a a lazy spice to this, kind of meandering across my tongue. Like a background spice. Just kind of. It's strolling in, gently, leisurely, through my palate. Mm. The overall palate here is a lot more mild than the other one. Mild in terms of? Just like, the, as far as the intensity of flavor. I mean, there's still definitely some complexity well, here. It's just as mild, there's just less of it. I think. Yeah, I don't know right. if it's intensity. I think intensity <clears throat> is that carbonation, the bigger, less restrained flavors here. I think there's maybe a less spectrum of flavors in this oh, one. Yeah, it's not as complex. To me, the intensity on this one, when I talk intensity, it's going to be a little higher on this one. The spectrum of flavors is going to be a little lower. Um, you know, again, when we're comparing, though, we're talking about a little bit more port, a little bit more leather on the last one. Those are characteristics of aging. But overall, just like, I mean, we don't have to nitpick that much detail is... The legend has it that they're either the same or very similar beers, and I would say that they're somewhat similar. This is like a homunculus that wants to be what the other one is, but is it? As far never as, have a soul. As far as grades go, I'm going to go 8 on this one. I think it's definitely a very good beer. It's not blowing my mind or anything. What do you guys think? I went high 8, low 9. I think this is right there. And it's a beer cap below it, you know, just yeah. just a thin, just a very small notch below it. If I was two beers into my night, I might not be able to taste the difference. I think they are that close. I think they are in the same ballpark. But kind of all of those Trappist dark ales are right in that ballpark, you know. And depending on temperature, depending on mood, I might like one more than the other. Today, I think this is just a notch below the other one. This could be a feature of age, but this one just lacks the magic. The je ne sais quoi of the previous beer, it was tremendous. Uh, I was a tad blown away. This beer, it's not there. Uh, you know, I'm getting malt, I'm getting ethanol, I'm getting, you know, some sort yeah, of it, classic, uh, you know, flavors to the style that that belong and you know they're there but it's not doing it maybe a little less subtlety yeah what there's less subtlety there's less complexity great. at the same time um, I'm gonna give this a seven it's certainly not bad but maybe it'll get better with age it as of right now I, I really have to give this a seven all right, well, I guess that about wraps it up for the St. Bernardus Habit 12. Um, it's still all a very enthusiastic thumbs up all around, though. Oh, yeah, I, I won't oh, complain yeah. about having this in my oh, fridge. Yeah. Yeah. So I I'm not going to be mad that you gave me this for free. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thanks to Kevin and Henry for coming out. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, stay tuned for some more great beer reviews. Yes, with a mouse. And only I still have some.